we're back with Unranked to Sovereign, and today I'm playing the newest champion, Vladimir. At the beginning, I thought that Vladimir was actually just straight up useless, but then I realized how devastating his late game can be. So I've made a rune page and playstyle to optimize him as a late game carry. Pretty much the entire laning phase, I'm gonna play as safe as possible until I've maxed my first ability. So I'm gonna keep poking him whenever my first ability is up and whenever I'm available. But the whole point of this playstyle is to scale for the late game and dominate in teamfights. Because once Vladimir is fed, he's honestly a bigger threat than Kale, bigger threat than Kassadin. His late game is just absurd. So in the early game, our cooldowns are very, very high. Like our first ability has a 9 second cooldown, which is just awful. And our second ability does, and our third ability does no damage. Our jungler is getting invaded early on, which sucks because we're so weak early. So we use our spells and now all we can do is just walk around and no attack. However, we are 3v2, so we are going to be able to win this fight. And I get a little greedy here, I could have flashed away and Kale would have probably cleaned up Yone. But this is fine, we trade the 2 for 1. I was actually not the enemy jungler that was invading, the enemy jungler is a Ramus. It was the enemy solo laner that invaded our Master Yi. But this is a great start for us, we do not get any kills, we only get 2 assists and Yone actually gets a kill. But considering how many minions he missed, we're still in even terms, gold-wise. So we're still in a pretty even spot even though we didn't get any kills from that. So we're gonna continue with our chill playstyle. I'm gonna thin out the wave with my third ability whenever possible. Because Vladimir is not great at farming under turret, so I don't want a massive wave under my turret. And also notice how I'm managing the wave, right? Yone is really good in long trades, I'm only good in short trades like these. So I'm staying very close to my turret, so she can't engage on these long trades. And I also cannot get ganked, as you can see. This is exactly how you want to play versus melee mids. Do not push to try and harass them under turret. If they're not going to the wave, don't all attack it for no reason. Hold the wave near your turret like I'm doing. Please, this is the mistake I see every mid laner do. And this how I'm getting so many free wins and getting so far ahead from laning phase. People just don't understand how to play ranged versus melee matchups or the other way around. When I'm playing a melee champion, the enemies always just push and give me the space I need to all in. But when I'm playing a ranged champion, my goal is to not give Yone that space that he needs to just all in me and kill me. I don't wanna, I wanna force him to short trades where he can't overextend because of my turret. Speaking of overextending, he just ults and completely whiffs it. So now I'm just gonna chase him down, follow his flash and get the first kill. That's exactly what you want to be doing. Hold the wave under your turret, wait for them to make a mistake and punish it. Because every time that he wants to last hit, he needs to come closer and closer to my turret. I can keep poking him down while being very safe. I mean, usually Yones won't make the mistake that this guy did of just diving me like that with his ulti. Even if he did hit the ult, I don't think he could have killed me. So I don't really know what that was. But in general, this is how you want to play laning phase when you're playing ranged versus melee. Do not push the wave, hold the wave. Our goal for now is to go for short trades. I don't want him to stack his lethal tempo. I don't want him to stack his damage on me. So I'm just going to keep doing short trades with my first ability and my second ability and staying outside of his all-in. If he does manage to all-in, I'm just going to pull and walk away. So we're not really scared of his all in. So whenever I'm, it's possible, I'm just gonna walk up, use my combo, and here he goes for a longer trade. I'm gonna proc my phase rush and get out. I didn't need to use my pull this time, which is great, because I do wanna keep that up in case I do get ganked. It's my only real gank escape tool. So I don't wanna waste it for every single trade, right? I wanna keep that up. Because if I do waste my pull, I'm then forced to play safer in case of a gank. Now I can play more aggressive, because my pull is up, so if I, could get, if I get ganked, I just walk away. Like Ram is coming for a gank, pull and walk away and that's it. Now for the next 20 seconds, I'm a little vulnerable, right? So I need to play a little safer and keep, keep in mind where Ramus is. But in 10 seconds, I'll have it back up. Oof, the Karma speed up gives me enough movement speed to get to the Yone, which we love to see. We're still playing in master tier, we're making our way to grand master. I've been abusing mostly Vlad and I've been playing a bit of Annie. If you guys want to see an Annie video, I actually think she might even be the strongest mid laner right now. It's honestly like a toss up. I'm having a lot of success with both Vladimir and Annie. 
the any rework was massive, a massive buff to her. So now we're back in the laning phase. Now we're so far ahead from this Yone that there's really nothing he can do. And if we want to, we can push, because even in all-in trades, I will most likely be winning them. I'm only getting stronger from here. I've gone past the point where I'm weak, and I'm just strong. Sphira is still very fat. I have no idea how my Kale got, like, two early kills. He literally started the game 2 Zero with I invade, but he's still somehow 2,000 gold on the Fiora. I don't know how that happens. I didn't pay too much attention to his lane, but that's crazy that that happens. So the dragon is up, and I keep pushing mid lane, right? I want that mid lane prio, so I'm able to rotate while Yone is forced to sit there and clean and clean up mid lane. And that's exactly what happens. I show up first, and my team and myself are able to just quickly clean up. We do see Fiora roaming again. This is her second roam to the mid lane to kind of stop us from going for the dragon because it becomes a 4v5 and obviously we don't want to take that. But it seems like Fiora is going for the Herald now. I am pretty low HP so I need to be careful. I still have my pulse so even if he ults me I'm okay. So I just want to spare my first ability and get my HP back up. We do get the dragon. Fiora is on the Herald. That's not an issue for us. We're going to keep pushing the mid wave to create pressure. Good first ability from good alpha strike from Master Yi to follow up. And we do want to get some early platings if possible. Kill is not defending bot lane. I don't know what the scale is doing this game, but it's not working out. Even with a massive early lead, just completely throwing it. Which will make this game a bit more of a challenge, but that's what we like to see. We want a challenge. Oh, I missed the cannon minion. So I see a play going down bot lane, so I'm gonna walk there in case Ramus tries to escape topside. He does not, so we'll just go base and get our first item. I know a lot of people have been going Riftmaker first on Vladimir, and I'm here to tell you that's completely wrong and that's not what you want to do. You want to get movement speed, CDR, and AP. Those are the stats you care about. You don't need lifesteal on Vladimir, you already heal from your abilities. Makes no sense to get more healing from like Omnivamp. Omnivamp is not a good stat on Vladimir. Good stats on Vladimir are CDR and AP. You're a burst mage, not a sustained mage. Do not fall for the trap to think that Vladimir is a sustained mage. He's not. He's a burst mage. You want to one-shot the enemies like I'm doing now. I do a small trade and I run. I'm going to do small trade and I run. That's a burst mage. A sustained mage would be someone like Swain. That's constantly dealing damage with his old and first ability, right? I'm actually able to dive him now. He's very low HP. He's going to pull Proto Belt. I'm gonna get my first ability on him, and even though he tried to get away, my ulti is gonna clean him up, and now I can continue to get the turret. He literally can't lane against me, and it's so easy to dive with Vladimir once you're ahead, because you lose to red aggro with your pull, right? So you can just do your first ability, do your third ability, the turret's hitting you, dodge it with your pull, and then just do your combo again, and he should be dead. Now I see a roaming opportunity, so I'm gonna loop all the way around in case the enemies run away. But they're not, they're actually chasing forward. So we're gonna run at the Zeri and just one-shot her. Master, he does flash for it, so I didn't need to flash. We kind of flashed at the same time. Wasted my flash a little bit, but that's fine. We do get the Zeri. And we're continuing to farm. Pay attention how, whenever possible, I am farming minions, I am farming camps, I am farming, farming, farming. Because you're a late-game champion, you need resources. I am slightly overextended for this wave, but we have the enemies, two of them are dead, so I'm not really scared. I see Yone on the map, it's only Rammus, and I do have my phase rush and pull, so I can probably get away from the Rammus no matter what. So now we're gonna continue towards our death cap. Once we get our death cap power spike, we're gonna be unstoppable. Good outplay from the kill. I should talk to him a lot, but he's 5, 2, and 1. He's down 2,000 gold while having... Well, he's 5, 2, and 1. I don't even know how that's possible. Either this Fiora is a god, or Kale just is missing every single minion. I don't know how that's possible. <laughs> so now we're gonna keep farming, and we're gonna keep pressuring waves. Like I said, you wanna farm, farm, farm. Any of you guys that have played League of Legends before and have watched Elite 500, one of the best Vlad players, I used to play versus him all the time back when I played in high elite League of Legends. He was one of the best Vlad players, and he still is. That's what he does. He farms, 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 and then he destroys the late game. And that's what you want to be doing with Vladimir. So I'm gonna farm the Krugs. I want to stay away from the Fiora, because she's actually really strong and can probably kill me. So I'm gonna stay away from her unless my team is there for a team fight. 
which is where we do shine because of how much AoE damage we do with her third ability, our pull, and even our ultimate. So I do have my death cap, I farmed for it, and I'm gonna immediately base and go get it because it's my biggest power spike. Once you get your two items and your death cap, you are golden. I wanna talk about summoner spells for a second as well. I do have ghost this game. Ignite is also fine to make your laning phase a little stronger. I take ghost in games that I don't think I can solo kill the enemy layer in there or really pressure him. And I didn't think I could with this Yon, but he displayed the lane abysmally bad and allowed me to get solo kills anyway, even with ghost. But if you can get away with ghost, it's a very strong summer spell on Vladimir in team fights. It's gonna allow you to go in and out of the team fights according to your spells. So our team, our team is just getting free kills because the enemies are getting caught in overextending like typical master players. We're gonna go in on the Morgana. I could have also gone in on the Zeri, but I thought she could easily escape with her third ability. We're gonna pick up the Morgana and throw the build out of there. As you can see, my damage is still relatively low. I'm not doing that much. It is AoE, which is really insane. Like being able to just half everyone's HP with your third ability on Vladimir is absolutely insane. So we're gonna work towards our Oblivion Orb. The enemy team actually does have quite a bit of magic resist, so we could also consider Void Staff third. I do like the additional movement speed from Oblivion Orb, but we'll see while we build this game. Void Staff is also a great option here, and you can see me considering it on the item shop. So we're gonna immediately go and pressure lane. This guy's way overextended, so we'll just kill him, I guess. We're gonna wait for him, come back, and just quickly kill him. Morgana is also stepping up to us. She's flashing for us, but she clearly has no no idea what she's doing. We still have our pull, so we're not worried. We're gonna use our pull to get away from the Fiora and flash away. We're in a 1v4 situation. We've gotten two kills so far. Master Yi is coming, so I do want to fight this Fiora. Oh no, my first ability was about to come up. Our ulti does finish it off. So we did bite a little more than we could chew, but I did think that the enemy team would go bot lane to try and stop my team. I didn't think that all five of them would just come mid, or all four of them, because I think our uh, Ramus was not there. So looking at the enemy's magic resist, they actually have quite a lot. So instead of going Oblivion Orb, I'm gonna get way more value from Void Staff. So instead of finishing my Oblivion Orb, I'm gonna start building the Void Staff. I'm gonna keep the magic pen component, the pennant, but Void Staff is just so much value this game. Okay, Kale. Oh, Yone almost went for the crazy outplay. I see you, Yone, I see you. But this Yone is just too far behind. He only has one item and it's 13 minutes in almost. So we're gonna continue farming jungle. This is something that I do in a lot of my videos and a lot of you guys get mad at me in the comments. You're like, stop farming the jungle, you can't. Yes, I can. I will keep getting resources and I will keep 1v9. I don't care if my jungler misses a camp. It's, the gold is better on me. Oof, that damage. Okay, Vladimir. Oh, the enemy team already surrenders. If you guys want to see another Vladimir video where we actually get to our super strong late game, comment down below. Additionally, if you want to see an any game, I'm playing a lot of any right now. Hopefully we'll get Grandmaster with Annie and Vladimir. If you have any other champion suggestions, please leave them in the comments. Like this video if you enjoyed and subscribe for more Wild Rift content and unranked to Sovereign.